curtindo um podcast, né? Sabe o que você também vai curtir? Saber que o melhor flip de todos os tempos chegou. O novo Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 6, com flex cam, que tem zoom automático e faz selfies de 50 megapixels. E com bateria estendida para nunca te deixar na mão. Vá a uma loja ou saiba mais em samsung.com.br. Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 6. Galaxy AI chegou. Going online without ExpressVPN is like not having a case for your phone. Most of the time, you'll probably be fine. But all it takes is one drop, and you'll wish you spent those extra few dollars on a case. Every time you connect to an unencrypted network in cafes, hotels, airports, etc., your online data is not secure. Secure your online data today by visiting expressvpn.com slash ratchet. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash ratchet. And you can get an extra three months free. ExpressVPN.com slash Ratchet. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and those who don't identify as either, you are listening to Ratchet and Respectable. Yo. I am having a day. Actually, like a week. I posted something on social media, like across all platforms, about how I was sick, essentially of adulting. I'm sick of all these damn appointments. Doctor's appointments, dentist appointments, specialist appointments, self-care appointments, nails, hair, waxing, lashes, all this shit. I'm so over all of it. Mind you, I'm gonna keep doing it, but but I was so frustrated when I posted and I was like, you know what, fuck it. I'm just gonna let myself fall apart. Like, I'm so over everything. I've had some sort of appointment with the exception of today, every day this week. Like Monday was the dentist, and then I was numb half the day and couldn't eat, so I was like in a sour mood until I got food. Tuesday was, I got my hair trimmed, which was lovely, but I got it trimmed at like 8.30 in the morning. That's when she's available. She's the only person I let cut my hair. When she's available, that's when I go. But still, 8.30 in the goddamn morning. And then Wednesday, Wednesday was nails. And then on Thursday, yesterday, I went to get my lashes done. Some people are like, you get your lashes done? I don't get like big snuffleupagus lashes, but absolutely I get my lashes done. I'm not putting on a strip lash every time I need to go somewhere. I know there's like an option of, you know, just actually wearing my regular lashes and just putting mascara or something on them. Once you get accustomed to lashes, it's really hard to let go. Just saying. And I love my lash lady, like love her down bad to the point that I drive from PG County to Columbia to get my lashes done. It takes like two hours for her to do my lashes. I'm used to like Ghana and Cape Town. I'm in and out in 30 minutes and my lashes look good. People take a little more time here. In fairness, the lash probably does last a little longer. I can go a full three weeks. It's not the most enjoyable experience. I go because I like to look good. But still, I know these are very first world problems. We haven't gotten to actual problems yet. So when I was in Martha's Vineyard, I had all this stuff including my laptop, because I was recording the podcast while I was traveling. I was packing in a hurry, and I shoved my laptop in my bag, my book bag, and I don't have a case for it. I've never had a case for any of them. It just is what it is. I shoved my laptop in my bag. I throw the bag on the bed. The laptop falls off the bed. It's happened 50 million times. This laptop has been around the world, and it's been through hell. Apparently, that last fall, it was just like, fuck you, D. It started with these like colorful lines, kind of like a rainbow going vertically down one part of the screen. It was annoying, but it wasn't tragic. And I was like, I'll deal with this later. Over the last 10 days, it's turned into this giant black bar where like it just gets in the way of everything. Even trying to edit, trying to watch Tiny Desk, like anything. It's just really, really annoying. And I have to keep moving my screen around to be able to see around the bar. And I was like, okay, I can't function like this. I need to take it into the store. I go to check to see like my Apple Care because I really haven't had this one that long. My Apple Care expired in July. So I just ordered a new computer at 630 this morning. It arrived by 1030. I was like, come on, Apple with the good customer care. So I'm going to try to use the other one until I can get this one fixed. And I may or may not send the new one back. We'll see. I'm so annoyed. Also. I think I'm the only person surprised by this because I sent a message to the group chat and everybody was like, yeah, like this is your MO. This is what you always do. 
So I was supposed to leave on the 29th. I'm now leaving in another two weeks. To which, again, I put this in the group chat and they were like, please, for everyone's sake, can you just extend it another month so we can all plan accordingly, okay? I was like, I don't do this every time, do I? I do. I do. You know I do because I talk about it on here. I do. It's, it's not intentional. I had every intention of leaving next week. I'm not ready to go yet. I've been back. It's coming up on 90 days. Oh, shout out to Garcelle Bouvet. I have butchered this woman's name on multiple platforms over the last three days in an attempt to celebrate her. I talked about that Terry McMillan film that I tuned in because she was starring in it. And then when I wrote about it on social, I proceeded to call her Gabby because that's what name was in my head. I was thinking Garcelle, but I was thinking also apparently Gabrielle Union. Totally not the same person. Don't look nothing alike. I should have just wrote the lady name out, but whatever. But I wrote Gabby when I meant Garcelle. And then I came on here. I mispronounced her last name. I mean, butchered it. The same way I looked it up this time. I should have looked it up last time. That was me being lazy. And then all last episode, which I didn't even catch. Like I recorded the episode, edited the episode, and then did a second edit, which I always do, to get any last minute kinks out. And didn't even catch that I called the lady Fanny, as in Fantasia, the whole episode. I meant Fancy from the Jamie Foxx show, but straight up called her Fanny and didn't even catch it until somebody came in my Instagram comments and was like, who is Fanny? Fanny who? I mean, they were sweet about it. But at the same time, I was like, shit, did I really call that lady Fanny? And did. My bad. Apparently, I'm doing too much. I mean, I mispronounce shit all the time. But calling people by whole other people's names, that's not as common. <laughs> I always think about this guy who wrote in once and he was like, look, cousin, sis, I know you don't want to be called auntie, but you got to stop doing auntie shit. Like these deep sides, every episode is classic auntie. The same guy who was like the deep size, he was like the oh dear. He was like, auntie, stop it. <laughs> Calling people you love by other people you love's name, classic auntie shit. I'm trying to overcome, work with me. But thank you to people who pointed out, like I am not above correction. Keep me on my toes. Keep me honest. Thank you. I've been watching good TV. Bel Air. I'm still recapping it online. I'm only on episode two, even though I've watched up to episode six. I thought I had more time. Remember when we talked about Bel Air the first time? I was like, Peacock gets on my nerves because they release like two episodes and then they do it week by week. And I just want to binge episodes. Somebody at Peacock heard our cries. Because last night, three new episodes of Bel Air appeared. I was only looking for episode four, and then they gave us four through six. The writers are writing. I don't want to give too much away because it just came out. You're just going to have to read the recaps on social. I kind of do a play-by-play -play of all my thoughts, or the majority of my thoughts, because there's a word limit. But it's so good this season. I will tell you this, because this is from Thursday of last week. Episode three of Bel Air. Will and Carlton are launching a new business and they go to this car show in downtown LA. And it's Will and Carlton and then Lisa, because her and Will are something that's undefined, but basically act like boyfriend and girlfriend, but there's no title on it because Lisa doesn't want one. And then Will's ex, Jackie, which to Carlton's credit, he was like, yeah, so you're going to have Lisa and Jackie in the same place? That's not a good idea. But Will's like, no, the more the merrier. Everybody's cool. Lisa don't care. Like, it's all good. Like, everyone's friends. Carlton's like, yeah, okay. Carlton also got a little boo. I said on socials when I first reviewed the show, I was like, eh, she don't really do it for me. He met her at rehab. She's been to rehab a couple times. She got a lot of issues going on. She seems like a nice girl. She seems to really enjoy Carlton. But like, I don't know. I just need him to get into a more stable place. And then her also to be in a stable place. And then they can have a nice, stable, healthy relationship. Carlton's all over the place right now. Like he's, he's reeling. I was going to say in a different way, but I think it's pretty much the same. Like he went to rehab and he's off drugs. But he still has the same problems that led him to do all the drugs that he hasn't fully addressed yet. And I was like, where is his therapist? They make mention of a therapist. But I was like, can we see him in a session? He needs a therapist bad, real bad. But Carlton's new 
It's not his girlfriend. It's his lady friend. They all end up downtown. Jackie, you know, she's an excitable personality. She's a nice girl. She's not particularly my cup of tea. I don't really mesh well with real, real yippy people. It's not the happy that bothers me. It's the yip. Just bring it down to a 10. You're doing too damn much. But okay. But Jackie's trying to be a good friend to Will or show her worth to Will. I don't know. But Jackie is running around. She's taking all these pictures and everybody's taking pictures. Everybody's doing video. But Jackie is just doing it like at a 15 when everybody else is at a 10. I'm like, you doing more than Carlton and Will and it's their product. So they have a great night out. They do some dumb shit they ain't got no business doing, but that's not the point. But at the end of the night, everybody's headed home and everybody in terms of Will and Lisa and Carlton and his new lady. And then here comes Jackie running up the street. Oh, let's get something to eat. Like they can make your favorites. Will's like, oh, I thought the spot was closed. Jackie, one of them people that like always know somebody who knows somebody got a hookup. She's like, oh yeah, like my friend knows somebody who owns the spot and they're going to open it up. So like, let's go. Good times. Keep the party going, blah, blah, blah. And Lisa finally said to her, and this is so outside of Lisa's character. She was like, damn, bitch. She was so over Jackie and her extraness. And Jackie's like a scrappy girl. But even Jackie looked shocked. Like it took her a moment to recover and then try to step to Lisa. Like, what did you say? Carlton's girlfriend, she got some bark in her too. She stepped between Lisa and Jackie. She basically backed Jackie down and then told Will and Carlton that she was going to leave with Lisa and get her home safe. And Carlton just looked at Will like, basically, I told you this shit was going to happen. Did. Oh, damn, bitch. <laughs> Usually I object to the B word. On a previous episode, I talked about how awful it was. Sometimes people got that shit coming. <laughs> this season is so good. It's so good. And they're just diving a lot deeper into like the inner motivations of the characters, their fears, their wants, their insecurities, more background. Although, I'm not going to give the storyline away. I know they're trying to give Jeffrey some more to do. And he's a fan favorite, so they want to keep him on the screen more. I understand that. You could let Jeffrey just be Phil's best friend and just have him and Phil have deeper conversations or something. Like, I know they want to give Jeffrey a storyline, but this thing with his son, I don't care. I don't like his son. He's a fine actor. He annoys the hell out of me, which means I'm having a visceral reaction. He's doing the job that he's supposed to do. But I just, I do not care not one bit about this storyline. I would fast forward through the scenes if it wasn't for Jeffrey. He's just so easy on the eye. They also introduced this chef. Did we talk about the chef last week? But the chef is fine, fine. Big fine, wide fine, 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 fine. As we say in the DMV, if I got it, he could get it. I'm just saying. Speaking of fine, Reasonable Doubt is back. You know how I felt about Reasonable Doubt. Especially because they had MF Michael Ely in the first season. I didn't like what they did with his character at the end, but it served the story, in fairness. But this season, they've added Morris Chestnut to the cast, and I was like, look, who is doing casting? Whoever is over in casting needs an immediate raise. Bonuses. Morris Chestnut, it don't make no sense for him to be this fine. He didn't really do nothing for me as Ricky and Boys in the Hood. And I remember I went overseas and I was studying abroad. I was gone for six months and the best man came out when I was gone and I came back and everyone was like, Morris Chestnut, Morris Chestnut, Morris Chestnut. And I was like, who? And they were like, Ricky from Boys in the Hood, Morris Chestnut. And I was like, huh? Like y'all on him now? Why? And they were like, yo, you got to see this movie, The Best Man. And then I finally saw The Best Man and he had the intro when he came in in slow-mo. And I want to say he had like on gray, he may have had on a peacoat. I remember the teeth. I remember the cross and I remember him just being wide and brown. And I was like, yeah, damn, Morris Chestnut. I have loved that man since I was like 20 years old, 25 years of me loving Morris Chestnut. It hasn't worn off because this new season of Reasonable Doubt, the way they introduced him, there is a scene in which a lawyer is needed and, and Morris Chestnut is called. You know what? I'm not going to even tell you. Because I saw it. I sat up in the bed. I couldn't even say, damn, I was speechless. And then I had to rewind it to make sure I saw what I saw. And then I had to rewind it again. I have watched the introduction of Morris Chestnut no less than 10 times. And we'll get off this podcast and watch it some more. The writers on Reasonable Doubt 
are also writing. The director is directing. The DP is shooting. Everybody is doing the Lord's work. Amen. Amen. Going online without ExpressVPN is like not having a case for your phone. Most of the time, you'll probably be fine. But all it takes is one drop, and you'll wish you spent those extra few dollars on a case. Every time you connect to an unencrypted network, in cafes, hotels, airports, etc., your online data is not secure. Any hacker on the same network can gain access to and steal your personal data. It doesn't take much technical knowledge to hack someone. Just some cheap hardware is needed, and a smart 12-year-old could do it. Your data is valuable. Hackers can make up to $1,000 per person selling personal info on the dark web. ExpressVPN stops hackers from stealing your data by creating a secure encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet. ExpressVPN is the best VPN. It's super secure. It would take a hacker with a supercomputer over a billion years to get past ExpressVPN's encryption. And it's easy to use. Fire up the app and click one button to get protected. What I love about ExpressVPN is it works on all my devices, phones, laptops, tablets, and more, so I can stay secure on the go. Secure your online data today by visiting expressvpn.com slash ratchet. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash ratchet. And you can get an extra three months free. Expressvpn.com slash ratchet. Summer should be fun, not financially stressful. With the Chime Secured Credit Builder Visa credit card, it's easy to start building credit with everyday purchases and regular on-time payments with no annual fees or interest. And if your credit scores grow, so could your opportunities for lower rates on loans, like for a car or home. I love Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card because there are no annual fees, interest, or credit check to apply. And you can use it everywhere Visa credit cards are accepted. And you're building credit using your own money. And you get access to more than 60,000 fee-free ATMs. That's more than the top three national banks combined. With Chime Secure Credit Card, you can improve your credit scores all summer long. Get started today at Chime.com slash Ratchet. That's Chime.com slash Ratchet. Chime feels like progress. The Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card is issued by the Bank Corp Bank North America or Stride Bank North America. Spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal and OTC advance fees may apply. Terms and conditions apply. Go to Chime.com slash disclosures for details. I watched Maxwell on Tiny Desk. I didn't even know it was coming. I was watching something else on YouTube and it just popped up. I gave it a quick scroll. The mic is on. I mean, it's Tiny Desk. The mic is always on. Maxwell sounds about the same that he did when he came out. Like, my freshman year of college, 96? Yeah. I remember there was a concert on campus for Maxwell. I was like, oh, I think I'll go. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But the concert was $5. It was $5 to go see Maxwell. And I didn't even go. I mean, I've seen him tons of times since then. But still, I could have seen him for $5. I paid more than that when I went to see him at the Kennedy Center with the orchestra last time I was home and he didn't even sing this woman's work. I'm still bitter. He did sing though. I mean, the man can sing, sing. Beautiful voice. I scrolled through Tiny Desk just to see what songs he did. He did most of the faves. He did not do woman's work. It's like the fan favorite song. I'm gonna just go ahead and guess he doesn't have clearance to sing it because it's the only thing that makes sense on why he doesn't sing it. And it leaves so many people disappointed. But I'm like, bruh, you brought it to us and now you don't perform it live. <sighs> Deep auntie side. I did see, cause I made a note for this. He did an acapella version of Ascension. Like it starts off acapella and then it slips into a go-go version. Cause you know, NPR is downtown. And then it goes into, you know, like the regular version. Worth the watch. Everything else I was fast forwarding. 
Not because I didn't want to see it, just because I had to get on here and talk to y'all. There's good TV coming down the pipeline, too. And film. Usher is coming live from Paris. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to see it because I was supposed to be leaving to go overseas. I didn't know if they'd be playing it in South Africa, but I'll be here. I guess I should go ahead and get tickets if they're still available. I wish we could do a screening or a theater buyout. That would be so much fun, wouldn't it? Maybe I'll just do it with the friend circle. Like 20 of us have dinner and then go watch Usher in Paris. That would be fun, right? Oh, and for what it's worth, I didn't go see Usher a second time. I like the show. I didn't love it. I don't feel like I need to see it twice. But one of my friends, she had tickets really close up. And her video of Usher performing was like amazing. And I was like, maybe I didn't love it because I wasn't close enough to the stage. I mean, we'll take that into account. It's not that I didn't like it. I just didn't love it. I also wasn't up on the stage in Ghana or in Paris, at least not the first night. I don't know. I'm not going to go see him again, at least not tonight. I will look to see where else he's performing before I leave, though. You know how I feel about Usher. Don't act like this is crazy for me. What else is coming down the pipeline? I saw the trailer for the piano lesson. Denzel is on this mission to make films of all of August Wilson's plays, which I totally support. Remember ABFF? I feel like I talk about ABFF a lot. You know what? Maybe they didn't show the trailer. They just showed a scene from it. But Denzel is a producer. One of his sons is a director. Which son is this? It's not John David. Malcolm Washington. It's Malcolm Washington's directorial debut. Denzel was so proud of him. He said he was on set just to, you know, just to help the child, make sure the child knew what he was doing, that he was comfortable. And he said he was on set for a while. And he was like, they didn't need me. He knew what he was doing. So he was like, so I left. <laughs> you know. Denzel is the most, like, regular, degular superstar I've ever had the pleasure of encountering. I'm like, I don't think that man really knows he's a celebrity. Maybe he knows, but he doesn't care. He's also like a 70-year-old black man. His fucks ran out a good 20 years ago. (laughs) If he ever had them to begin with, he doesn't really strike me as somebody who had a full factory of fucks to begin with. The trailer looks really freaking amazing. And everybody and their mother is in the film. So when Denzel talked about it, he talked a lot about Danielle Deadweiler. She played Mamie Till in the Emmett Till story, for which she should have got nominated for an Oscar. You know how sometimes people make those lists of like films you'll never watch again? That's on my list. I will never watch Till again. I won't watch Till. I won't watch The Pursuit of Happiness. And I won't watch... When They See Us on Netflix. Too heartbreaking to watch again. And you know, I like to cry, but it's just, it's too much. The kind of well and emotions that are stirred up by those three movies, I'm good. But she did an excellent job. She's in this film as the sister. John David Washington plays the brother. Who else is in this? I'm trying to move my jankety ass screen around so I can actually read the rest of this list. Samuel L. Jackson. Erica Badu. Gail Bean. Is that my Gail? I ain't know Gail was in this. Now, mind you, just mind you, I don't actually know Gail. Me and Gail, like, DM and text. We're, like, friends in each other's heads. But I fucks with Gail. Big Gail, not the little one. I cannot wait to see this movie. It's coming on Netflix. But when is it coming on Netflix? Hold on. November 22nd. Oh, we have a ways to go. They get me all excited for a film ain't coming out no time soon. (sighs) Fine. Build anticipation. There was something else I was looking forward to. Lee Daniels, The Deliverance. People I know who have seen it have been raving about it. There have been some reviews that came out recently that weren't so good. But I didn't look to see if the reviewer was a black person. Because it makes a difference on black films. Harlem Nights was panned by reviewers. But then, like, every Black person I know, that's, like, one of their favorite films. Even if it's not in their top five, everybody can quote Harlem Nights because you watched it so many times. Who was in this film? No, first, let's find out when this film comes out. Like, that's important. August 30. Okay, so we have seven days until Deliverance. I think it's in theaters now. 
I'm not going to the theater to watch like a black version of Exorcist. I don't really do horror like that. I read it was based on a true story. Single parent Ebony Jackson moves her family to a new home for a fresh start, but something evil already lives there, inspired by terrifying true events. My girl is in this, Anjwanu Ellis. I love her. I love her in everything that she's in. I liked her before Lovecraft. And once I saw her in Lovecraft, particularly the episode where she's time traveling, I was like, oh, I love her. I think that was episode seven. I used to watch that episode over and over and over and over. I am. But yeah, she's starring in The Deliverance. Who else is in this movie? Andrew Day, Monique. Okay. Caleb McLaughlin. Why do I know his face? What else is Caleb McLaughlin in? I'm on his Wikipedia right now. Oh, he was in a new edition story. I think he played baby Bobby Brown. He grew up that much? The new edition stories for 2017. Yo, if you asked me, I would have told you that movie came out two years ago. Why is time moving like this? Miss Lawrence. Octavia Spencer, Omar Epps, Tasha Smith, and Glenn Close. Where do I know Rob Morgan from? Oh, Don't Look Up. I do remember his face. Remember Don't Look Up? Like that? It was like a end of the world film on Netflix with Leonardo DiCaprio. He was the black guy with common sense. What else do we have on this list before we talk about the DNC? Oh, congratulations to Nelly and Ashanti. I think that's our good black news for the week. Nelly and Ashanti did have the baby. Healthy baby boy. Today's episode is brought to you by Angie. Angie has made it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals to get all your jobs and projects done well. Let me tell you, there's the version of it where you try to do something at home, and then there's a version of it where you have someone help you, you watch them do it the right way, and you go, thank God I didn't try to do that myself. I have fully done things around the home that I think look good and then a bang in the night and I wake up to a shelf collapsing, a painting falling off the wall. Like it, I've, I've seen it all go south. I own a home and I can tell you, I know how much work it can take. Whether it's everyday maintenance and repairs or making dream projects a reality, it can be hard just to know where to start. But now all you need to do is Angie that and find a skilled local pro who will deliver the quality and expertise you need. Whatever your home project, big or small, indoor or outdoor, you can Angie that and connect with skilled professionals to get the project done well. Right now, one of my wish lists is I want a bike for my condo in Milwaukee and I would love to rig it up on a pulley in the ceiling because I have one of those like lofted ceilings, but I'm so scared to try that on my own. Angie has 20 years of home experience and they've combined it with new tools to simplify the whole process. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions and Angie can handle the rest from start to finish or help you compare quotes from multiple pros and connect instantly, which means you can take care of any home project in just a few taps. Because when it comes to getting the most out of your home, you can do this when you Angie that. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. When I think of summer smells, I think of sunscreen, salty beach air, barbecue on the grill, and unfortunately, body odor. Well, not this summer. Thanks to Lumi Whole Body Deodorant, B.O. will no longer be an unwelcome guest at my summer plans. Their pH-optimized formula is clinically proven to block odor all day. And it's not just for underarms. It's for everywhere we get odor. Pits, privates, feet, underboobs, you name it. So no matter how hot it gets, you can still smell fresh and feel confident from head to toe. Ready to make this your freshest summer ever? Great. New customers get 15% off all Lumi products with our exclusive code and link. Use Ratchet15 at LumiDeodorant.com. L-U-M-E-D-E-O-D-O-R-A-N-T dot com. I've been using Lumi for years and I love it. I love the variety of scents like clean tangerine, lavender sage, and my favorite toasted coconut. I know you're ready to give Lumi a try. So start with the starter pack. Lumi starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice like mini body wash and deodorant wipes, and free shipping. 
As a special offer for listeners, new customers get 15% off all Lumi products with our exclusive code. And if you combine the 15% off with the already discounted starter pack, that equals over 40% off their starter pack. Use code RATCHET15 for 15% off your first purchase at lumideodorant.com. That's code RATCHET15 at L-U-M-E-D-E-O-D-O-R-A-N-T dot com. I saw Ashanti posted some postpartum pictures of herself. I have no criticism whatsoever for this woman's body. But, you know, the internet being what the internet is, plenty of people had something to say. Like There were people in the comments, mostly men, that are like, damn, she fell off. Sir, she had a baby a month ago. A month ago. And they were like, oh, women in the comments telling her she looks beautiful or lying. She needs to lose weight. She had a baby. She created a whole human over the course of like 10 months and then pushed it out of her body a month ago. Do you people hear yourselves? It's a lot of men that just fundamentally just do not like women. Fucking women? Yes. Actual like women? Respect women? View women as actual people that have a usefulness beyond like fucking and serving? No, not so much. <laughs> Many people sent this to me when it happened, and I didn't really want to talk about it because I like her as a person, but in fair game, I should probably mention it. Russell Simmons is over in Bali, and he has celeb friends that come and visit him. From time to time. Usher has gone to visit him. Which we only know because he posted the picture. I don't think Usher ever said one word about it. One way or another. And then Taraji was recently over there. This wasn't her first time being over there. And this isn't her first time hanging out with Russell. I don't know if that's public knowledge. But it's true. Russell posted a picture of him and Taraji. All hugged up in Bali. Looking like the best of friends. And... People saw the picture and was like, what the fuck is she doing? Like, what is this compulsive urge celebrities have to go hang out with someone who their core fan base, because Taraji and Usher, there's there's a lot of overlap there. Overwhelmingly, their fan bases are, are Black women. What is this compelling urge y'all have to go pal around with a man who has been accused on multiple occasions, like seven to 10, of some form of sexual assault by multiple women. Like, why? Why? I can't relate. Also, to my knowledge, Taraji and Usher went over there. They don't come back and post pictures of them playing around with Russell. They've decided to keep this man who's been accused, again, multiple times of sexual assault by multiple women. They choose to keep this man in their friend circle for whatever fucked up reasons that they choose to. I don't get it. But that's the choice that they made. They go over there and hang out with him. They know better than to come back and post pictures. And then when they get back home, Russell posts the pictures and be all like, oh, look who came to visit. Love you so much. And I'm like, you don't recognize that he's using you? He knows he's persona non grata. He knows a bunch of people don't fuck with him. He saw the film about all them women accusing him of sexual assault, just like we did. Of course he watched it. If he didn't, his lawyer did. Somebody came back and told him what was in it. We know he's aware because he did an interview last year talking about all the women that have accused him. And he was like, yeah, I just think this is a case where I've had sex with, I think he said thousands of women. And he was like, these are some women who are confused. He said, maybe I didn't treat them the best after I had sex with them, but that doesn't mean I assaulted them. Maybe I was a dick, but I wasn't like a rapist. I was like, your lawyer approved this line of argument? He's saying he's not guilty. Maybe, I guess. All right. But like, you're well aware that their reputations take a hit by palling around with you and being seen and associated with you. And yet, you don't give two fucks about their reputations, about their audience, and how that will make them look to their audience. You just go ahead and post it because you know that you gain goodwill for the folks who are diehards for those celebrities and for the folks that are on the fence. It's like, well, I love Usher and I think Usher's dope. And if Usher thinks Russell is dope, then maybe Russell's not as bad as what they're saying. Maybe things are not, you know, what they seem. Same thing with Taraji. 
you know, Taraji has like a mental health organization and she's dope. And she's one of the first people to put the masses on to Project 2025. People in political circles were talking about it, but the masses, you're an influential woman. You're considered a smart woman. You're considered a politically astute woman. We've been following you for like 30 years since baby boy. Russell knows this. He's using her celebrity. He's using the goodwill that is afforded to her, hoping some of it will rub off on him. And I'm like, why are you lending yourself to this shit? Why are you willing to take these professional hits over this nigga? I don't get it. This is the same thing I said about Usher when he did it a couple months ago. Sir, you were at the peak of your career. You are bigger now than you were during confessions. You fresh off the Super Bowl, fresh off a new marriage to your third wife. And, and you decide to go honeymoon in Bali with Russell Simmons. Why? I love me some Usher. The decision making be lacking sometimes. I just, ugh. I do not understand. Last but not least, we need to talk about the DNC. Everybody watched it, so I don't feel the need to do a, a real long, deep recap of it. I'm not CNN. But there are some moments that I think are worth mentioning. I'm going to tell you in advance, I'm going to confuse nights three and four. Because it's been like a full 24 hours of DNC TV. It's like six hours every night. Like, it's all starting to run together to me. Oh, and I should also mention, when I did my recap of the first two days of the convention, I left out, charged it to my head and not my heart. Jasmine Crockett, Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett, she put together another little alliteration this started with all V's talking about Trump. She asked, will a vindictive, vile villain violate voters' vision? She did that B6 thing a few months ago, back in May, I think, talking about Marjorie Taylor Greene, unfortunately, her fellow congresswoman. I like her lots. I think her voice is necessary, so I'm going to keep it cute. Don't be a one-trick pony. Like, you had the moment off the B6. There's no need to, to replicate that with the Vs. And you see she said it and it didn't really stick. I'm like, you, you're you multifaceted and you're really deep and you're really smart. And B6, that comment landed you on the stage at the DNC and you're being alley-ooped into the next phase of leadership for the Democratic Party. Don't miss this moment and don't fuck it up with the gimmick. You got people's attention. They listening. They looking. They want to hear what you have to say. Just go on and say it straight. You don't need you don't need gimmicks. Like you you good. You real good. Let's just let's do the work. Do the work. The second wave of attention will be even bigger than the first because the work is good. You already got our attention. You good? What else do I have on this list? Oh, we didn't even get to my list. I saw a bunch of folks talking about Clinton. I woke up cuz you know I take naps. I woke up just in time for to watch Clinton as in President Clinton, not as in HRC. He went on pretty early in the evening for ex-president. I was like, oh, I mean, I remember the days when Clinton, I mean, he was the president. Clinton was the Democratic Party. Not so much anymore. He went on very early in the evening. And I was like, is Bill Clinton now an opening act? Bill Clinton is no longer headliner? No. But I saw a lot of people like pundits and people I really respect talking about like, oh, Clinton doesn't look the same. Like I remember the 90s and now he's like an old man. Well, yeah, the 90s were like 30 years ago. Like time has passed. He aged just like you age. If you remember him from back then, you don't look the same way you did either 30 years ago. Unless you're like Maya Harris, we'll get to her. It don't make no goddamn sense for Maya Harris to look like that. That lady is 57 years old. A good and grown person's mama and two people's grandmama. Is that genetics? Is that good work? Is that a good MUA? That woman looks phenomenal. That bob was bobbing. I want to cut my hair now. I'm not going to cut it. I'm just going to weave it up when I get back. Phenomenal. That's not the point. I don't remember what Clinton said. Nothing particularly stood out to me as quotable. It was a fine speech. John Legend saying Prince. I didn't actually see that in real time. I saw so many people dragging it. I had to go back and watch it. Let John Legend sing John Legend. He got a whole rack of songs. He's had great albums. He has made great classic timeless music. 
uh, why would you have John Legend sing Prince? It's like having Donald Glover sing Usher. Lori Harvey voice. Why? But they did. I don't I don't get it, but it happened. Coach Waltz. Walls. Walls. He was great. He's such a likable man. It, it, the greatest part about him, no disrespect to his wife or daughter. That son, son Gus, standing up in the middle of the DNC, proud of his dad, pointing to his dad with tears in his eyes. I mean, sobbing, really. And was like, that's my dad. I don't honestly don't even remember what Wall said. I watched it and everything he said in the moment, he sounded great. I read that he'd never read a teleprompter before that night. And I was like, sir, you're, you're the governor. You just go off script as governor? Like you don't have no teleprompter as governor? He delivered an amazing speech. He came across as warm, lovable, likable, with good common sense, but also could get a little rowdy and fussy if need be. And I was like, yes, like, like yes, yes. But then that son stood up. That's my dad. You could be up there just lying out your mouth and we'd never know the difference. But your kid standing up, proud of his dad. And I was like, oh, you a good man, coach. You really you really about the life that you say you about. Like the fruit from your tree will tell you about your tree. He's a good man. There were a bunch of Republicans making fun of the kid. So I call him a kid. I mean, I also call everybody under 30 a kid. But I specifically call this boy a kid because he's 17 years old. Even if I thought negatively about him, I probably wouldn't say so, at least not publicly. The group chat is something different. But publicly, no, because he's a kid. He's off limits. But people started dragging Wall's kid. Come to find out, he is, I think the proper term now, I feel like the terms keep changing. I'm, I'm trying to be politically correct. If I'm not, correct me. But neurodivergent, even if he wasn't that, he's 17 years old. He's a child. But People went in, people, as in, you know, those those MAGA people, went in on this kid. He was blustering. They were implying that he lacked masculinity because he was crying. And I was like, it's a teenage boy expressing joy, tears of joy, overwhelmed by the emotion of pride and love he feels for his father as a man. Do you not want your son, your child even, to feel that way about you? Is your desire not as a father to be loved and adored by your family? I mean, I'm not a parent. I'm a childless cat lady with no cats. But I would just think that this is something you would desire as a parent. Like to really like get on your phone and Twitter finger tight about a 17-year-old and his affection for his father. You are broken. Something in you is broken. Hey everybody, my name is Bob the Drag Queen. And I'm on Exchange. And we are the hosts of Sibling Rivalry. This is a podcast where two best friends gab and talk smack and have a lot of fun with our black queer selves. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, we are family, so we uh, talk about everything, honey, from why we don't like hugs to Black Lives Matter <laughs> to interracial dating to other things. Right, Bob? Yes, and it gets messy, and we are not afraid to be wrong. So please join us <laughs> over here at Sibling Rivalry, available anywhere you get your podcasts. You can listen and subscribe for free. For free, honey. Day four, I woke up right as Oprah was coming on. I didn't go back and watch any of the rest of it. Sorry to all the people that came before Oprah. Oprah was good. Oprah was Oprah. It was a very Oprah speech. It was a fine speech. She did a great job. I mean, it's Oprah. But I didn't feel any particular, like, surge of emotion. Like, it didn't give me anything that happened with walls. I didn't want to just immediately run out and vote. It was, it was, it was cool. It was Oprah. Oprah's always a joy. I miss Kerry Washington, Olivia, and Fitz. Tony Goldwyn? Is that the actor's name? I hope I ain't butchered that man's name. Olivia and Fitz came to the stage. I didn't see her with Fitz. I found the clip where she was with the little girls. Those are Maya Harris's grandchildren. The little girls with the pigtails. One had on a little pink suit, and then the other one had on a little blue dress. Those little girls and their pigtails are so damn cute. But Carrie Washington and the girls went over a tutorial 
of how to pronounce Kamala Harris's name. Now look, it was one thing for folks to not know how to pronounce the name before she was vice president. It's not a name that we're used to hearing often. We had to hear it a little bit to get accustomed to it. I think the first time I spoke about Kamala Harris on the podcast, I had to be corrected. I think I was calling her Kamala. And they were like, no, no, comma, la, which is exactly what the little girls did last night. And they were like, comma, like a comma. And then the littlest girl was like, and la, 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 la. Yes, yes, it's easy. Even small children can do it. Surely the members of the Republican Party and the news anchors on Fox can figure this out. It shouldn't be that difficult. I know there are people who don't like her, who don't like her politics for whatever reasons. Okay, fine. She's the vice president of the United States. And before that, she was a sitting U.S. senator. Maybe you didn't know her very well when she was a senator, when she was an attorney general. Maybe she hadn't like popped on your radar. She's been vice president for almost four years. You, you can figure out her name. You can. It's one thing to mispronounce shit on accident. It's an entirely different to just be intentional and make fun of somebody's name. We're not like, I don't even know if kindergartners do that shit. We're not like, I don't know, surly middle schoolers. We're, we're not in high school. Like, get some basic social decency. My God. I wish we could have talked about Beyonce. TMZ, who usually be on it with the accurate news, no matter how salacious or scandalous. Like, if TMZ said it happened, it's usually happened. TMZ reported that Beyonce was performing at the DNC. There was no Beyonce performance at the DNC. We were all ready for Beyonce. Kamala Harris spoke at the DNC as the keynote and officially accepted the nomination to be the nominee for the Democrats for president of the United States. All the balloons fell. Tons of balloons. I ain't never seen that many balloons in my life. Like, I was talking about the balloons, and my mom was like, they always drop balloons. No, no. That was like an extra, I don't know, 10,000 balloons. That was so many balloons. I want to know what the balloon budget was. I asked that on threads, and somebody was like, more than a public teacher's salary? And I was like, oh, shit. All right, all right, all right. It was visually stunning, though. Big balloons, small balloons red, white, and blue balloons, and confetti. And then the audience started tossing the balloons around. The political theater of it all, it was it was amazing. It was an amazing production. But I was watching them play with the balloons, and I was watching all the people on stage. It was just a whole bunch of people on stage mingling together. And I was like, how are they going to move all these people off the stage and then, like, you know, sweep the stage? Or is Beyonce going to perform in the middle of the balloon? There was no possibility in my mind that Beyonce wasn't going to perform until they were like, okay, now bring to the stage XYZ and XYZ for tonight's benediction. And I was like, wait, Beyonce is going to perform after the benediction? No, there really wasn't a Beyonce performance. I was like, I know you fucking lying. I was going to watch either way. But once I heard Beyonce was performing, and it made sense, because like, you know, the theme song of the campaign is Beyonce's Freedom. But I was like, okay, so Beyonce's going to come perform at the DNC. And Beyonce has performed at a DNC before. It wouldn't be her first time. It wasn't so far-fetched. But there was no Beyonce. Womp womp. Kamala's speech was great. I thought she looked super presidential. I don't think she said anything, to me at least, that was particularly groundbreaking. I thought it was a strong speech, but I was expecting a strong speech. Nothing really surprised me. There was nothing that she said that I thought was a particular quotable. It wasn't like Michelle Obama's speech. It was a fine speech. The star of the night was not the vice president. It was MF Maya Harris. One appearance. I'm putting an MF in front of Maya's name. That's the one to watch. I mean, Kamala, please, like, go lead. We should not be concerned with your hair, your clothes, your wardrobe. You have important policy shit to do as president of the United States. Go do all that over there. Just go work and go God. My hair. I want to see every outfit in Maya's closet. I want to know who's doing the hair. I want to know who's doing the nails. I want to know the skincare routine. I want to know who the makeup artist is. I want to know everything about Maya Harris. I'm duly obsessed. Like she came strutting on that stage with that beautiful Barbie pink suit and then that beautiful long bob that was just a moving and a shaking and a bouncing and then the face was beat. Everything out her mouth just was pure black woman. 
she talked like a black girl. And I was like, oh, Maya Harris is just, oh, more Maya. I thought Maya Harris was Mina Harris, who's Maya's daughter, who's 40. I have this reaction to Maya Harris and I'm on social media all night and I see somebody say that like, yeah, Maya Harris is 57 years old. I know you fucking lying. I had to Google it on my own. That lady is 50 and seven human years old. Out here looking like a goddamn vampire, like she got bit at 40 and this is her face forever. It makes no sense. People are like, oh, that was a good makeup job. Ain't enough makeup in the world. Now you tell me she had good plastic surgery? Tell me her surgeon. That woman is beautiful. Flawless. I'm obsessed with Maya Harris. We need a new Desiree Rogers. I used to live for that woman's clothes. When she was running the events at the White House? Live. Live. But now we have Maya. And Mina. And the girls. I was like, this is so exciting. I really want a Vogue cover. Or Essence. Can we get an Essence cover that's like the equivalent of the Obama cover of when the girls were little? I want to say they're like sitting on steps or something. That cover was everywhere. And I was like, can we get an Essence cover with Kamala and Maya, and Mina, and the girls. So like generations, because that's three generations, yeah? Put those three generations of Black women on a cover and like them right. I mean, it's essence, I gotta tell y'all that. But could you do it before Vogue does it, please? Please? It's my one request. I don't ask for much. I don't. All right, I think that's the episode. Is there anything else pressing? Oh, we didn't talk about Mr. Doug's speech about Kamala. Or that she accepted the nomination on her 10th anniversary. I like Mr. Doug a lot. I like him a lot for our vice president. He seems like a very good, supportive, caring, understanding husband. If it's all an act, the man is a great actor. Give him a goddamn Emmy or an Oscar. I really do like Mr. Doug. And I like how they get a little giddy around each other. I like it lots. Okay, that's it. Talk soon. Talk on Tuesday. Okay, bye.